Today, we're going to take a look at the whole Home Surge Protector Lightning Arrestor, otherwise known as the EMP Shield, and whether it has any everyday value to the prepared homeowner or if it's just the modern day equivalent of alien abduction insurance. <laughs> Hey guys, Toolman Tim here, back at it with another review for you. So let's dive right in. Today, we're going to take a look at the EMP Shield. We're going to look at their claims and guarantees. We're going to look at the installation process. We're going to take a look at the third-party testing. And we're going to take a look at the objections that I had and that I've heard from other people. I first found out about the EMP Shield about a year ago when a buddy of mine won one at a festival. And I thought, hmm, EMP Shield, that sounds a little hokey. I don't know what's going on. So I mentioned in my podcast a while back, hey, if anybody knows the EMP Shield guys, I'd love for them to send me one so I could check it all out. So that's exactly what happened. EMP Shield got in contact with me, said, we'd love to send one out to you. Here, would you like one? And you can test it out, install it, see what you think. So me being the skeptic that I am, I said, yes, I'd love to. Let me look into the third-party testing, the verified claims, and see, does this thing have any value? Is it something I can legitimately review? And can I share with the community what I find out? So here's the thing. I'm not going to start talking about the science behind it, because if I did, <laughs> what's going to happen is I'm going to end up looking like a dummy. I'm going to try to talk about shunts and microseconds and electromagnetic pulses, and I just look like an idiot. But what I can do is look at the science behind it and talk to you about how I vet a product that can't easily be tested on a day-to-day -day basis. So first off, let's take a look at what comes in the package, what you get with it. Then we're going to look at the installation process, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the third-party testing and some of the objections that I've had and that other people have had about this product in general. Okay, so here's what you get in the box with the EMP shield. Two lights, four wires. This is the one made to install outside the electrical box. And with it, this is it. That's all there is. An opening on this side to put three quarter inch conduit, four screw holes to mount it to the plywood that is behind your electrical panel. And that's it. Up close view, you wanna see the specifications. I'll go into more details afterwards. Lots of a, a good long pigtail here you can trim off. Okay, so we're gonna show you how I installed the EMP shield. Mine's already installed because I stood in front of the camera while I installed the whole thing last time. So we're gonna do a reenactment to show you. What do we need? Well, to be honest, we want an electrical tester. I like this pen tester. We need a screwdriver and optional, well, kind of optional, wire stripper slash wire cutters. That's really all you need. Now I wanna tell you guys something. First off, everybody always says, if you're going to mess with electrical and you're not comfortable with it, hire someone else to do it for you. And that I agree with 100%. But how else do you get comfortable doing something but trying it? So if you've messed with electrical in the past and you're somewhat comfortable with this, ask somebody to give you a hand. Ask somebody to show you how to do this so that you're comfortable doing it the next time. So first thing we need to do, we're going to go around here. We're going to take off all six of these screws. That will allow us to take not just the door off, but the entire panel cover. So once we have that off, we'll go from there. Okay, so like I said, first thing now, if you're absolutely uncomfortable, turn that main power off first, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So let me show you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take these six off here. Set them somewhere careful so you don't lose them. A lot of times what I will do, if you know there's nothing that can fall down, I put them up there. One last thing to end up losing or dropping. This one right here. Panel cover is off. So you got to remember your live feed from the pole is coming in right there. So don't remove this cover piece up here. That's where your live wires are going to be even after you turn off your main power switch. I'm going to show you what I did. So here is our 20 amp breaker. So the first thing you need to have when you're doing this is a dual 20 amp breaker. Now, 
Take a look. I don't even have a single 20 amp breaker, so I had to go out and buy one. So the first thing you need to make sure is that you have an empty slot in your breaker panel, which I did. We knocked it out down here. 27 and 29 are now the EMP shield breaker. If you haven't done this before, it's not that difficult. But again, if you're to turn the power off, you want to have one of these guys right here. Touch the wire. See, that's off. But we have live wires there, so that tells us it's live. You touch these guys, and we know we don't have any power running through them right at the moment. Good to know. So all you do with a breaker is it goes in. So there's two hooks on the back side. It goes in along that metal bar right there. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer here. There we are. So you see this metal bar with those little hooks right there? This guy goes in that side first, and then there's two teeth on this side. You just push it in. In on a 45 against that metal bar and snaps into place. That's all there is to putting a breaker into a panel. Now, there's four wires that come with the EMP shield. Let me show you here. So, you've got a green wire, you've got a red wire, you've got a black wire, and you have a white wire. That's it, four wires, like I showed you at the beginning. The red and the black wire are gonna go into each side of the 20 amp breaker. So you just need a little piece of wire right there. You're gonna loosen that up. You stick the wire into the screw and you tighten it down. Simple as that. Red or black, doesn't matter which direction they go, but red and black have to be into the breaker. Now, green needs to be into the ground bar. So if you're not sure, if you have an existing panel, all you need to do is look, where are the bare copper or the green wires already running to. That's the ground bar. They each work the same way. You back off a screw, slide the wire in, tighten the screw down. That's it. Then we need the white bus bar. That's where your neutral wire goes through to complete the, cir the circuit. So again, that's the long one right here. Look in your breaker panel to see where the white wires are going. Find an open slot in that bus bar where your white wires go, back off the screw, slide the wire in, tighten it down. That's it. So you need to make four screw connections. You need to install a breaker. That's all there is to it. Now the wires that come off this are quite a bit longer. You don't want any more wire in there than you need to. So leave yourself a few extra inches, trim it off with your wire snippers, strip the wire coating, then install it. That's it. So EMP shield wires run. You're going to need to knock out a knockout on the side of your panel. Get a little wire nut right there. That's it. You're going to bring your red and your black wires in. You're going to connect them to the new 20 amp breaker or an existing dual 20 amp breaker you already have. You're going to connect your green to your ground bar and you're going to take your wire, your white wire, your neutral up to the white neutral bus bar. That's it. Okay. Simple. Not bad, is it? I'm a big believer in purchasing things that have multiple uses and everyday value. So let's talk about the guarantee first that EMP Shield offers, 10-year guarantee. So if it ever fails due to defect, manufacturer's issues, that will be repaired or replaced without charge, whatever, neither here nor there. But what I love is the $25,000 guarantee where the company puts their money where their mouth is. And to me, that seems like something. So they offer a $25,000 guarantee. The warranty covers damage from electrical surges or lightning. And even if it's considered an act of God, it's still covered. And finally, they have another guarantee where that if the box is ever struck by lightning and does what it's supposed to do, and what happens is it completely destroys the box, <laughs> you send the EMP shield and 50 bucks back to them, they'll send you out a brand new one. The next thing I did was uh, I emailed my contact and I said, here's what I'd like. Some real world examples of this product actually working, actually saving somebody's behind. And less than four hours later, he sent me five different examples of letters written by customers, uh, what it saved for them. So let me give you a quick example. There was a small district water department in Kansas. They used one and they saved $65,000 on equipment and a bunch of downtime simply because the place got struck by lightning. The EMP shield was the sacrificial item. It blew instead of all the other equipment. Another one was an off-grid homesteader that used it to protect their backup battery system. And again, it kicked instead of frying their batteries. And then a third one was a homeowner in Texas 
that a lightning strike hit their house and saved their Tesla batteries. So as far as this product called the EMP shield, it has been tested and proven in the real world that it works as a whole home surge protector and a lightning arrester. That alone to me, if we if I stop right here, I'm good with that because that's what I'm looking for, protection like that. Now, the elephant in the room, the EMP testing. Here's what I'm gonna say. There's no guarantees about EMPs. Most 99% of what we know is theoretical, okay? I will not guarantee that the EMP shield will protect you from an EMP. I can't do it. If the company says it, that's one thing. But here's the thing. What can we go by? Well, really the only thing is third-party testing. This was not testing done by myself, of course, or by EMP shield. So what they supplied to me, what's on their website you can see is the EMP testing done by Keystone Compliance. Now, that's great. You're like, oh, what's Keystone Compliance? So, because I don't like this kind of shit without digging into it. So I dug into Keystone Compliance to see, are they really third-party verified and an independent uh, lab? Yeah, they are. They're an ISO, ANSI, and ISTA certified testing facility. They do third-party testing for a bunch of military EMP hardening devices. That's just one thing they do. They got all kinds. I went through the 129 page report from them regarding the performance of the EMP shield devices. They had six different EMP shield devices, all the different ones their company has. They were all tested to three different military standard specifications. <laughs> I had to write that part down, guys, pertaining to electromagnetic interference and the effects. And in every single case, these units complied with the standards and suffered zero damage or degradation, including multiple runs at the same test. So to me, I'll never guarantee that an EMP can be protected against. But what I can do is look at third party verifications like I do with flashlights and a bunch of other things to see, hey, is somebody who doesn't have a financial stake in this product willing to say that it does what? the manufacturer says it does. And in this case, this report tells me that it does. One more cool thing. If you guys have followed me for a while, you'll know I like IP ratings. When I review flashlights, for instance, I think the IP ratings are really good. If you don't know what they are, again, they're a third-party standardized system that deals with dust and water intrusion. And you might say, well, Tim, if this guy's going to be screwed to my electrical panel, I don't need to worry about it. You're right, but a lot of people put these on generators, they put them on quads, they put them on uh, rangers, side-by-sides, that kind of stuff. They put them on their bug-out vehicles. So if you want uh, something that will protect it from a lightning strike or from a possible EMP, uh, you want to have it on the item that's moving around. And in this instance, all the EMP shield devices are IP66 rated. So... What does that mean, Tim? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the first digit, the first six, is for dust ingress. And a six means that it is 100% protected from total ingress of any dust. I like that. Now, the second six is for liquid. And that means that it's protected from high pressure, so 15 PSI water jets, from any direction for a length of time. Now, here's the last thing. And when I talk about an EMP shield... This is what I get. I get, oh yeah, well, guess what? A guarantee on an EMP won't be any good if it fails because the whole world will have collapsed. Well, back up. That's a, an argument from ignorance because the warranty and guarantees they offer have nothing to do with EMP. Their name is EMP Shield because they are third-party tested to survive an EMP in this instance. But what their warranty and guarantee is for is for everyday use. It's something that is going to be a benefit to just about any homeowner. I'm excited to have it hooked up on my electrical panel. This is 100% to do with an everyday lightning strike or power surges, and that's the protection you're looking for. Next one. This is one I got. Uh, I saved these for you. <laughs> Problem is, you can never be 100% sure this is going to work until after the event happens. So here's the deal. You're right. We can't be. All that we can go by is independent third-party testing, like I said. And if this was only an EMP shielding device, 
we wouldn't be having this conversation. For me, the EMP shielding of this device is just icing on the cake. Now, here was the next one I got. Uh, this was an actual YouTube comment. It says, I'm, a, I'm skeptical about a box of tricks that'll work as an EM shield. The best shield for your vehicle would be to ground the metal body to the ground, thus making a Faraday shield for sensitive electronics. So you can hang a piece of chain from your vehicle to ground to the road. It's cheap, it's free if you find it on the side of the road. And I'm cool with whatever you want to do. But here's the thing. You're putting your faith into a piece of chain hanging off the back of your vehicle. That's the other thing. Whenever you deal with this kind of stuff, everybody's an EMP expert. I'm not an EMP expert. I'm just looking at everyday protection for a home. Now, this thing has been tested to withstand that sort of thing. So, like I said, if you want to put your faith in a piece of chain on the back of your vehicle, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to. We're all free humans to do what you want. And finally, the last one I got from uh, this was on Facebook, said it's a whole house surge protector, nothing more. The only thing that will protect your entire house, the only thing that will protect your entire house is a Faraday cage. EMP is a wave that hits everything in its path. No way that little box can protect against that, no matter what the ad says. Well, here's the thing. All of that is an opinion, which is cool. The last bit is what the ad says. I'm not going on what they advertise. I'm going on the third-party verification that I dug into, a 130-some page document that I went through and looked at the oscilloscope readings, all of it. And when I came out to the other end, I'm like, well, this is the most sure I can be about something like that. So is it a whole home so surge protector? Sure it is. Is it a lightning protection? Absolutely. Uh, will I guarantee that it'll protect against an EMP? I can't. But what I can do is look at that verification of the third party testing and be happy with it. So I went from a skeptic uh, when I first started looking into this product because of the name, the EMP Shield. And that's what turned me off from it at first, because honestly, it reminded me of some of those uh, Y2K survival kits that they sold at the beginning of the millennium. And I thought, well, this is not going to be a legitimate product. And then I started talking to the company and I'm like, holy shit they actually offer whole home surge protection and lightning protection. And to me, that's really the only reason I wanted this. The EMP part of it could be a, a serious threat or a minor threat. Either way, it's icing on the cake to have that as a bonus. But for me, I love the guarantee. I love the fact the company puts their money where their mouth is. I love that they could give me real world examples of how this worked. And I love that they could give verified laboratory testing of the result. So take it for what you will. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this got a little bit deep, but I had to show you both how to install it and I had to show you my thought process for reviewing a product that is really hard to review. The only way to review it is to ruin it. And so I wanted to share that with you. So I hope this helped guys. I'd love to know your thoughts on this product. So throw it in the link, the description below. Let me know if you've been eyeing them up. And like I said, I will do another video when I pick up the smaller one for the generator. I'm kind of looking forward to trying that one out as well. And with that, guys, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.